Hey everybody, I'm Chris. And I'm Leah. And we are at Cano HQ in London. Um, it's a very exciting week for lots of educators out there. It's Computer Science Education Week. And we're involved in, in that in the Hour of Code initiative, yep. which lots of you will be familiar with. Um, and it's started by the folks over at code.org as a one hour introduction to computer science. And it aims to demystify coding, show that anyone can learn the basics and get people interested in computer science. Yeah. Things that we're pretty keen on, right? Very much so. So as a very special Hour of Code thing this year, we have got the Harry Potter Cano Coding Kit. This thing here. <gasps> so pretty exciting. cool. Um, you, lots of you will have seen us talking about this with this wand here. Yeah. Great news, you can do these challenges without the wand. <gasps> so I'm going to get put this away for now, put this over <laughs> here. Uh, we don't need the wand, what do we need instead? We just need a mouse. A mouse. Amazing. You may have one of these at home. Yes. Uh, it's going to make things really easy for us, right? Yes. We don't need the wand. So we have got five challenges from the Harry Potter Cano coding kit. I still can't get used nice. to saying that, it's long. Well done. Um, which you don't need the coding wand for. You yep. can do them in your classroom, you can do them at home, uh, you can do them in your coding club, yep. you can get involved and find out what it's all about and then at the end we'll talk about how you can get hold of the full kit if you yep. love what you've been doing and want to uh, try taking it further with Harry Potter and Cano in the Harry Potter Cano coding kit. So, we have an educator's guide for this, which I discovered a few minutes ago, they helped <laughs> to write and lay out and do the smart stuff in. Yes, that's true. Is that what true? What a great coincidence. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a fantastic coincidence. Yeah. I printed this off and thought, oh, this is nice. I wonder who did well, this. This is helpful, yeah. yeah. I also happened to do the whole introduction. Yeah. So this Ooh. is our lovely uh, challenge walkthrough educator's guide for the Harry Potter Hour of Code. Um, and I think basically what we're... Uh, trying to explain here is um, how the usual idea of block-based coding um, yeah. yeah sorry you're better yeah. at wording okay. this <laughs> <laughs> so I look after a lot of the social media stuff here at Cano and a question that comes up again and again and again is is this proper coding are my children or the classes that I'm teaching or my co-club or me uh, going to actually be doing real code? Yeah. So the answer to that is yes. Yes. Um, you're <laughs> using a block-based coding system where you drag and drop, right? And there's yeah. JavaScript behind that. That's correct. So this is where I can... This where is where I know in. my stuff. Okay. Um, so basically inside, if you imagine in each coding block, there's a line of JavaScript and for you, those of you who don't know what JavaScript is, it's a really powerful programming language. It's used everywhere. It's used on a lot of um, stuff online, on websites. Um, it makes things interactive. And uh, all sorts of places use it, from everything from Netflix to NASA. Wow, OK. Yeah. Pretty serious stuff. Yeah, it's on the space station, but it also helps you watch your favorite TV show. So there's a, there is a, a big, legitimate, powerful programming language behind the blocks that yeah. you're using. It's huge, and it's incredibly useful. And I think when, when uh, I sat down to talk about the one with Mike a month or so ago, he made the point that you can do tons of really awesome stuff with JavaScript, but the learning curve is quite steep. Yeah. And with a block-based coding system like Cano Code, you can get in and you can do really cool things really quickly, right? Yeah. It helps you take that first step. And the great thing about um, the Cano stuff is that you can view the JavaScript. After you've dragged the blocks in, you can convert it into JavaScript and actually see the written word version. Very cool. Yeah. So in this introduction, so this, this teacher's educator's guide that, that you've helped to write yeah. um, is a great resource for anybody that is taking uh, young coders through these challenges. Yeah. And it helps you prove out that what you're talking about is real coding and that there's core concepts of how to program yep. involved, right? So there's four of them that I think we cover. Yep. Not that I've had a sneaky read through first. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. Um, do you want to take us through those and, yeah. and sort of explain what they mean? Sure. So um, in the guide, we first talk about uh, functions, and those are basically the main parts of any piece of code. They okay. uh, make sure that they run when certain things happen. So the main one that we use is when the app starts. That is a function. Okay. We'll see there's more when we yeah. get going. We'll go through you, you, in a minute. You yeah. can point out, I can point out where, which things are a function. Okay. So uh, on the full kit, if you do a spell motion, you that would be a function. So is a you function can, like a, a, an instruction that tells other bits of code yeah. to happen? Yeah. Okay. So it's like, when this thing happens, do this. Okay. If you click the button, 
then and then something inside of that block does something that outer one is a function okay cool yeah brilliant what, what else do we have we have variables okay variables are basically little you you've got to explain it as like sort of little boxes where you can store information okay so I can like make a box and put in a number there that I'm going to be using later. So like um, 10? Yeah. Okay. And I can write a name on it. I can write whatever I want. So I could be like, this is the position of my mouse at the moment. Okay. Say I'm going to store it in this box. And then you can take that number out later, uh, further down in the code and say, give me the mouse position and it will save what was in that box so you can use it later very cool it's super useful okay and we use it a lot yeah it sounds familiar i feel i've i maybe have played with variables yeah. and not realized what i was doing definitely it's one of those things that um comes up a lot because it's so useful yeah yeah okay so from variables we move to parameters is that right parameters that's okay. true uh so as it says on here parameters are what makes functions powerful okay. so um we use parameters mostly for uh, when you place an object, like an owl or a mm -hmm. feather or something, onto your um, coding space. Um, when you choose the placement of it, those two things are parameters. Okay. So the X position and the Y position of where you place it, mm -hmm. those two things are parameters. And those can change, right? You could be yeah. like anywhere on the on the square of your canvas. Yeah. They, that could be the parameter. Yeah. Okay, very cool. And the final thing that we talk about Conditionals? Conditionals. Okay. Uh, they're also known as if statements. Okay. And uh, luckily they're quite easy to explain in that, so basically you say, if this thing is happening, then do this. It's like a type of function. So uh, let's say, if I move the mouse up, do this thing. Okay. If I don't move it, it won't run that code. And for people of uh, my generation, yeah. Who have possibly got young coders in their lives? You may have uh, you may have learned about these at school with programs like programming languages like Basic. Yeah. Where it says if this, do this. Yeah. So th this is exactly like, the same stuff. This is like quite an old school thing, right? This is like yeah. a real core component of lots of programming languages and like yeah. understanding how logic works and stuff. Yeah, this is a great thing. None of these things are just JavaScript. All programming languages have all of these concepts part, as a part of them. Mm -hmm. So you can transfer anything you learn from block-based block coding into any programming language you might want to learn. Okay. So if you're, um, if you're say, an older coder, you've been, you've been through code clubs at school, you're maybe uh, getting towards doing your exams, you're sort of in your mid to late teens, as an entry level, this, you're going to be way past this potentially, aren't you? You might be doing yeah. other languages, but you can still get value from using this. It's, it's a, if you're a Harry Potter fan, it's a fun thing to play with. Yeah. Like, you legitimately it's know how to code and you still have fun with this. I've got <laughs> no idea how fun. to code and I have fun with this. Yeah, it's great. It's like being able to um, prototype things really quickly mm -hmm. and um, instead of worrying about spelling and capitalization and things, if I'm trying to get an idea made really quickly using blocks is so great yeah because i can just pick things up and put them down as if i'm like sketching or doodling but with but yeah. with code so you might not like write programs for sort of running banks or no. putting rockets into space using block based code <laughs> but it is a legitimate program way to learn to program yeah, it's, it's a great entry for anybody that's not coded before or maybe yeah. if you're a bit rusty or have memories like i do from the 1980s <laughs> of like moving a turtle around the floor with a pen in it if, you, if you're an old BBC basic user, get in touch. Um, so should we have a look yes. at the challenges that we've got? Let's get I know going. we're both quite excited about this. So we put together a, a blog post on uh, blog.cano.me. The first post is up there today um, is the Hour of Code 2018 uh, blog post. That has got all the information you're going to need if you want to follow along with what we've been doing. Uh, it has got links to the challenges. It's got links back to code.org. It has got links to Hour of Code where you can find the previous Hour of Code projects that Cano has been involved in yeah. over the last few years. And it also has the Harry Potter challenges. So there's the first one is Levitate a Feather. The second is Summon Bertie Bots Every Flavor Beans. The third one is Create Fireworks the Fizz and Bang. The fourth is Play Music with the Yule Ball Instruments. And the fifth is Control the Flying Car. And just underneath those is a link to the Educator's Guide. So we talked about this beforehand. We've, we've both got our favorites of challenges in yeah, the coding definitely. kit, right? So 
we've decided we're going to have a go at Bertie Bot's beans, and then we're, if we've got time, we're going to control the flying car. Yeah. Okay. So let's go into the Cano Hour of Code 2018 page, Ooh. and this will load up all five of the challenges. Yeah. So. Where are we going to go first? The, we're going to Bertie Bot's beans? Start with the beans. Okay. So it starts with the easiest uh, challenge, mm -hmm. and then it slightly levels up in difficulty. So the last challenge is going to be the most difficult. Yeah, and in the educator's guide, I think it says that the levitate a feather, summon Bertie Bot's beans, and create fireworks are beginner's challenges. Yeah. So if you're brand, brand new to coding and the concepts around coding, these are a great place to start. And they play music with Yule Ball instruments and control the flying car are intermediate challenges. So they're a good place to go next. Yeah. So if you're working through all of them, you know, start right at the beginning is the most yeah. logical thing. Um, we also put in into the educator's guide how long each of these challenges takes. So if you're running a class and you're wary of time uh, or you just want to be able to plan your lesson plan out properly, yeah. really, um, that information is in there as well. Yeah. So let's click on this one and load it up. Ooh. This is definitely my favourite. Yeah? Yeah. Of all of the challenges? Of all of the challenges? Well... It, all of the Harry Potter challenges? Okay, that's a big ask, right? To be fair, I do love the one that's very similar on the, the wand where you uh, make them bigger. That's quite a lot of fun. That is so fun. And then you that make them go fun. tiny again? <laughs> I could do that for ages. <laughs> so should we have a go at this? We, we, yeah. We'll follow the instructions. This is... Um, this is the, the great thing about the Harry Potter coding with a Harry Potter kind of coding kit is the step by step instructions that yeah. take you through what you should do and um, hopefully explain as you go what you're doing and why. Yeah. So I'm going to have a little go of steering this one and then yeah, I'm going to hand over it. to you. Uh, so when the app starts, use the when the app starts block to run code as soon as the app starts. Open the events tray. So th this is the what type of block is this? <laughs> this is a function it's block. It's a function block, okay. So you you are literally dragging and dropping these with your mouse and just dropping them into this space yeah. here. Um, in the full Harry Potter Cano coding kit, you wouldn't see the mouse tray because no, it would be you'd a have one a wand tray. tray instead. <laughs> so if you've got the full kit and you're a little bit confused, don't be. This is a very special version of this, yeah. this application just for Hour of Code. Yeah. Uh, so drag that one in. Yep. Yeah. And then we're going to get some controls. Uh, so we've got a loop. So we've got a functional block. Yeah. And then we have a... Um, Another functional block? No. <laughs> being challenged here. This is a... I've got to make sure I get this right, because otherwise I won't be told off yet. Um, no, it's a yeah, it's another function block. Another function block. So and this one, the repeat the ten times where it's a loop. Is that a variable within the loop where you can change that, or is it <laughs> not quite? Ooh, yes. No, I would say that is a variable. It is a variable. Yeah. Okay. So we, as you can see, there's there's instructions coming up for each step, and there's a little yellow dot next to every block that you need to be moving. Yeah. So it's, it's, you're being guided through. We don't leave you on your own. Um, and if you're an educator running a class um, filled with young coders, they can be left on their own to work their way through, right? Yeah, this is, uh, there's enough guidance in there that they're not going to get lost, they're not going to get confused. And if they do and you need to come over and help, the instructions are on the screen for you as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we don't want an owl, which is a disappointment. It is sad because the owl is really cute. It is. Uh, we want some Bertie Bot's beans. We do. And so... We have here, this is a parameter, right? Oh my Create gosh. Create Bertie Bot's beans. Yeah, so Name where, Bertie Bot's beans. Yeah, where it's placed are, are two parameters. So by default, this is giving us X and Y coordinates of yeah. 400 by 300, which yeah. is sort of over here yeah. in the middle somewhere. So if you give it a click, oh. there we go. Beans right in the middle. Yeah. Um, which is great, but it is. I have a feeling we might want to put them wherever our mouse is actually we, placed. I, I think the, I the, think the, the orange the dot step. is hinting at I that. I might right? know what we're doing here. So, <gasps> what oh, surprise? Yes. So that's these it. are the mouse coordinates, right? Yeah. So it'll grab wherever the X and Y positions of your mouse is, uh, and then it will create the beans there instead of directly okay. in the middle. So if I try clicking the mouse again, so if yeah. I go all the way over here on the yeah. left, beans. <gasps> If I go over here on the right, beans, beans. right at the top, beans, beans, beans. <laughs> so many beans. That's I'm quite sat that's beans. genuinely quite satisfying. It's actually. so great. The physics on this are amazing. Wouldn't it be good if you could just get 
beans by clicking a mouse button. Yeah. That'd be pretty good. I'd be okay with that. Yeah. I think I may have thought, I think you've run out I, of I've beans run out of space. beans. Disappointing. Okay, so let's go back to following the instructions. Yeah. So we want to stop them from stacking up by using an apply force block. So okay. instead of them all going like, bloop, they should go, bow. So here where I've ended up with a whole room full of beans yeah. is not the end goal. Well, it, it, it will be okay. at the very end. Don't worry, you can, you can fill can... up another room with beans. Yes. Let's keep okay. going. <laughs> so we want to add some physics in. Yeah. Uh, and that's another... Is yeah. that a parameter block? Not quite. <laughs> I'm asking difficult questions. You are asking difficult questions. I'm sorry about questions. this. So, uh, and we're going to add some maths in. Yeah. So we're going to randomise where our beans are flying off to. So 360. Oh, wow. Surprise, surprise. It means okay. we're going to be throwing them all around instead of just from 0 to 10. And if I'm oh, upping the strength, is that how far and how fast yeah. they get thrown? Okay. Now we're going to add a speaker in. So this is over here. So this is yeah. this is a part that's not normally in the tray of components. Yeah. So this is gonna, like an additional. Yeah. So, and now it's over here in the speaker tray all on its yeah. own. So we'll grab the speaker and that goes. Yeah, underneath the loop. So we just want it to play once. Yeah. Otherwise it'll go. Dum 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 dum. Forever. And change. It. Well, no, not forever. Not not forever. Only five times. Five times. That's still quite a lot. <laughs> that that could be. I think if you had a classroom filled with this going on, that could be. Yeah. Could get a lot. Stay away from loops, kids. Um, <laughs> Don't do loops. Okay. So. No loops. We're now good. we're now going to try clicking around the canvas. And yeah. So if I'm looking at this code and I'm understanding this correctly, it's mm -hmm. saying when the app starts. Yeah. Once you click the mouse. Mm -hmm. Five times it will create Bertie Bot's beans yep. at the coordinates of the mouse, the yep. X and the Y, mm -hmm. and then it's going to apply force onto the beans yep. in 360 degrees yep. at a force of 50, yep. and it's going to play a pop effect on a speaker. Yes. So that's what we're looking for. Nailed it. Okay. Let's just turn the volume up just so everyone at home can yep. hopefully hear this. I love this. this sound effect. Let's see, let's see what happens. Think, I'm, I'm, I trust my coding abilities, obviously, but. <gasps> Oh, that's quite exciting. That's way more fun than having them stack up. So it's throwing the beans around, it's making noises, it's doing them at the coordinates of the mouse. Yeah. And if you were using the coding wand, it'd be doing them at the coordinates that you point the coding wand, right? Yeah. Okay. So this is a challenge that is out of the Harry Potter can of coding kit, and it's been yeah. modified for Hour of Code, so this is yeah. true to the experience you're going to have. So. Yeah, it's the same backgrounds, the same objects, the same sounds, all of it. Very cool. Okay. So if you press the next button, there should be a suggestion ah. of what what else could we do? We could change. We could use owls. Make owls appear. We could. Okay. Should we do that? They're quite big, so they might fill up quite quickly. Okay. But you did say you like the owls. I do like the owls. Um, or you can you can use any other object. Is there something else that's sort of small, like the beans, maybe that we could fill the room up Ooh, with? Ooh, let's have a think. What have we there got are down potions. Here? Potions are quite good for that, or beers. What about chattering teeth? Yes, they're quite fun. Those are fun. Let's go for like those. the animation on those. Um, and looking at the picture, I think we are in Weasley's Wizarding Wheezes as well, right? So Ooh, they they would fit there. Possibly. In the wizarding world, that'd yeah. be a good place for chattering yeah. teeth. <laughs> so now that we've changed the object to chattering teeth, yeah. it's also changed automatically. It has automatically changed it. That it's going to apply force to chattering handy. teeth. So let, let's see what happens. <gasps> okay, that's quite a lot of. Oh, and because they're animated, they're doing their own thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually quite fun, really. Um, you could have a room of vaguely terrifying chattering teeth. Yeah. Just At least we didn't use the spiders. We didn't use the spiders. <laughs> I think we would we, we be shouldn't thankful use of that. The spiders. Don't use the spiders. For what this. else can we change on it? Could we change? Could we make more than five appear at a time? You could. So, it, I guess if I change the repeat five times to ten. Wow, it's a lot of teeth. It is a lot of teeth. But, and then if I sort of click in the middle, ten yeah, pairs of ten teeth. Ten teeth. Oh goodness. Yeah, we have a bit of a teeth stop <laughs> problem at Weasley's Wizarding Weasleys right now. Too many chattering teeth. Yeah. Um, so, but so let's let's go back to the other challenges. Yeah. Um, so what we've looked at here quickly before we move on is um, functions. Yeah. Variables, parameters. The only thing that's not in here is a conditional, right? 
We haven't actually used any variables. We've not used variables? No. We haven't set any variables. We haven't set any variables. Okay. Are we going to do that in the next one, do you think? Maybe. Ooh. Maybe. I'm Possibly. asking questions. I'm leaving the witness. Possibly. Ooh, I, don't think this one, I don't think this one does, actually. Oh, okay. All right. Well, <laughs> we're going to move on from this. As you complete each challenge, you get a, a golden ring of completion um, around the little tile. Really, really important thing to note, actually, um, from a uh, like young people using the internet and a safety perspective and how much information we're gathering, you don't need to log in to use this. This is free to use. There's no login required. Uh, you can uh, use this as many times as you like and you don't need to put any email addresses in, you don't no. put your name in, you don't save anything. Uh, the only thing it does is as you complete a challenge there is a cookie that changes the colour to show that you've completed the challenge and if you want to remove that you can go into the settings in your browser and clear the, cookie, clear the cookies and clear the cache and reset it. So yeah. if you've got multiple uh, young coders that are working through the, the Arab Code challenges on the same device and you'd like to reset so they get the same experience you could go and reset the cookies and reset yeah. the browser cache and it wipes all of this and turns it back to the beginning, right? Yeah. Or you could go into incognito mode. You could that do that. Save That's quite sneaky. It would be very sneaky. Very sneaky. So the other challenge that we decided to take a look at was controlling the flying car. Yeah. So I've had a quick look. Okay. The, uh, the one challenge that does use an integer on here is the playing music with the Yule Ball instruments. Okay. And we sort of decided... But I'm not sure yeah. how well the sound will come across. Yeah. So there's, this is one that has quite a lot of sound in it's it. Very, it's all sound based. Um, I think if, you, if you're if you running through this for Hour of Code, it may be a good idea to make sure that everyone has headphones. Um, just because you're going to get some really weird sort of crossover sounds between different groups of people doing yeah. different things. Yeah. Uh, so that everyone gets the best experience and, and everyone is, is happy and not overwhelmed by Yule Ball instruments. Headphones <laughs> might be a good idea, yeah. right? Okay, so we decided we were going to control the flying car. This is one of my favourite things from the Harry Potter movies, the original yeah. ones, um, when Ron and Harry maybe steal the flying Ford Anglia. <laughs> uh, so we can relive that moment now, right? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. And Hasn't everyone always wanted to relive this I mean, moment? who doesn't want a gigantic flying car? Yeah. I mean, I kind of do. I um, definitely do. So, we're going to make the car fly following the mouse cursor. Mm -hmm. uh, this again is another challenge from the Harry Potter Cano coding kit. Yep. In, the, in the kit you use your wand and it follows the position of the wand. So we're substituting, in, in each of these challenges, we're substituting in a mouse for the wand. Yeah. So let's, let's give it a go. Let's follow the instructions. So. Right, we're using another when app starts. It's a very useful uh, block. Uh, and, and we're we, going to start out by creating the car. We start with an owl, though. Always an it owl. It always starts with an owl. It's my favourite default object. Look at him. It's almost a shame to change him, isn't it? He's just sat there, he's happy. Well, at the end, we could change the car to an owl. We could make and a flying owl. owl. Okay, okay. Is that if I'm, I'm infinite, well behaved? Infinite remix. Infinite potential. remix, okay. So this challenge is about making a Ford Anglia fly, though. Yeah. So let's. Let's find that on the list. In here are all of the um, the assets that are within the Harry Potter Cano Coding Kit right now. So there's all sorts of different things that are used in all sorts of different challenges, and you can remix um, any of these Hour of Code challenges using yeah. the, these other pieces. So if my alphabet works correctly, yeah, F there Ford, we are. There we go. Wow. Whoa. Okay. It's a big Ford. It is a big Ford. I have a feeling. Up. Our next step might be to shrink the size of it. I mean, it's bigger than the moon, <laughs> which I suppose could be a perspective yeah, thing. Yeah, I mean, we're not right next to the moon. We're not right next to the moon. Raise a valid point. <laughs> um, and so we're going to... Okay. Yeah. So we've got to change grow to set. So there's other things. You, so you could set, you could shrink. Mm -hmm. I guess set defines that it stays at a particular size yeah. rather than... The changes around. Uh, the object is all because the only object we're going to have on the screen is the Ford Anglia. Mm -hmm. um, uh, sorry, we're going to change the Ford Anglia because we don't want to change everything that might be on the screen. Yeah. <laughs> Confusing myself there, not helping anybody at home. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> Although all would still work, but it's best to. It's good practice to pick the one thing that you're adjusting, right? Yeah. Okay. In case you add things in the end. Okay. So we are going to go to. Set a size of 50. It's really tiny right now. That's a much better size. So it's 50 half the size that yeah. that object is as default. Yeah. Because it was really big on screen to start with, right? Um, so we now have a Ford Anglia. 
on the screen, just hanging out, doing its thing. It's chilling. Uh, and we need to use a loop to add force to the cart every frame. Is, yeah. is this what's going to make it fly? Maybe. What do you think? I, I hope so. It is. I feel I've been promised a flying car. <laughs> this uh, will definitely help. <laughs> so. So we've got to have a loop here that chain that uh, is updated every frame. Okay. Because if it was to update every second, it would, you would move the mouse and it would only see it the movement every second. Okay. And take uh, so it'd be a really of it. jerky. Yeah, it would be not very good. So in here, you've got three variables to pick from. There's frames, seconds, and milliseconds. Mm -hmm. I guess milliseconds is the fastest. Yes. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Okay. <laughs> so when you think of frames, you've got to think of like frames per second. Okay. And like. It's it's like an animation based term. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So we're pulling in like animation and creativity as well as coding here. Yeah. There's like knowledge of different things. Yeah. Um, and we're going to apply a force. So this is the same block we used with the Bertie Bots beans. It is right. Okay. I was paying attention. Yeah. Yeah. Good job. Um, <laughs> and we're going to pick the forward angle again. Yeah. Uh, we are going to change the angle. Of the Ford Anglia, uh, we're going to the mouse tray. I think I can see what's going on yeah. here again. I've... So, what happens is that um, every frame, it will look at where the Ford Anglia currently is, and then it will change the angle from that to the angle that is calculated from where the mouse is. Okay, and again, the strength is like is how fast yeah. and how quick it's moving. So, so have a go at let's see moving what around. It's gonna just move the mouse over there. Oh, oh whoa! Yeah, whoa! It's pretty wild. I don't think I'd want to be. I in don't that think that Anglia. that was quite how it was in the movie. I don't remember that. I just, I've just crashed it into the floor. No, that. Oh, oh hello. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We need to do something about that, don't yeah. we? Yeah. Okay. We're gonna be using some logic. Brilliant. I've stuck the, the Ford Anglia to the side of the sky, which is probably not right. Um, <laughs> I, that's don't, I, think I, have, right. Yeah. I think I might have missed that part of the movie. <laughs> this is yeah. why I'm not allowed to write It's films. time for some conditionals. Yeah, okay. So we're going to add some from the, the logic tray. Yeah. And so what's it saying? By checking the current angle of the car, you can spin the car the opposite way to keep it upright. Yeah. So okay. we're asking, is our car too much this way or okay. too much that way and we'll say if it's less than and what number Ooh. if it's less than change the oh, so we're yeah. from the x position so if the angle uh the, if it, yeah the sorry anglia. <laughs> the, <laughs> the angle of the ford anglia i love angle of ford anglia um it? if it's less than 20 so that means it's like that way yeah. Then we'll use some force to just like some. We'll spin it up so it's back up right again. Okay. So the object spin block is going to spin the car around, and that's yeah. again in physics. Yeah. Whoa. Wow. Okay. Yeah. If you leave it outside of that loop, it sort of does its own thing. It will continue to spin it by um, fifty. <laughs> change all to Ford Anglia. Yeah. So again, that, like we've only got one asset on there, but this is best practice Definitely. for coding generally, right? You want yeah. to be neat and tidy. Yeah. Because if you have to go back, if you change of things after, code, yeah. then it's going to get confusing. Um, and there's quite a lot of strength there. It's saying yeah, from it's 50 going... down to one. Yeah. Okay. So it'll just slightly mm. just pop it over. So this is great, um, but it's so if we go too far left, it'll spin us right. But then it will just Ooh. keep going. I, so we need to do yeah. another if statement. I mean, I'm pretty good um, in cars and in flying <laughs> things, but I think I'd be struggling a bit in, in this one. I don't think I'd be very well. Yeah, I don't think so, I would. Yeah, I, not so good. I love roller coasters, but that's it's just, just too, too much. Far for me. It's too much. Um, maybe if there's a like a director's cut or a special edition of the Harry <laughs> Potter films, we could add this in. Yeah. Just you know, it's just a suggestion. Yeah, JK, I wouldn't. Okay, if you're I, all listening. <laughs> Um, I would not go on this ride yeah. <laughs> on in Harry Potter world. Okay, so we're adding another if statement. Yeah, so uh, it's going to be very similar to the one we've just done, but it's going to be uh, instead of minus twenty, it will be uh, regular twenty. Plus twenty. Positive twenty. Just twenty. Yeah, <laughs> good old twenty. <laughs> And again, this is an, this is changing the angle, right? So yeah. it's stopping it from just spinning around and round and round on itself. Yeah. Um, and with the objects again, picking the Ford Anglia, making sure that that we, we've got the right thing selected, and 
something, a value in there of 20. Yep. So, and then a little bit of physics. And this is another object spin. Whoa! Yeah, that, that looks even See, less fun. See, this is the strength 50 that's doing it. So this. it's too much strength, so minus one. So, on the one before, we had positive one, we've now got minus one, and yep. we had uh, angles of minus 20 and plus 20. So now this is going to hold it relatively neutral, yep. right? It's going to sit sort of in so the middle. So it's not going to be totally static, it'll still be leaning towards where we're going. It's still. I'm still not sure I'd want to get in this <laughs> Ford Anglia. I'm, it's still great fun to, to control, though. But it doesn't turn upside down. It's, it's. Yeah, it's still sort of bouncing around. Yeah. So if we change some things around, uh, what are we going to get? So next, so there are the, the sort of remix challenges that make it so it doesn't rotate at all. Yeah. How, how would we go about doing that? Ooh. I'm asking well, difficult questions. No, not get. really. Okay. I could think of uh, exactly how you could. Could we that. change yeah. how many, how often it's happening? So if we speed it up, would that slow down the wobble? I'm just curious as to what that does actually. So we're going to go from frames to milliseconds <laughs> just because I want to see. I think it'll do. Uh, actually, makes because it a there lot are more worse. milliseconds. Goodness, yeah, that's, than that's there not are improved frames. things, has it? But then. Uh, and then seconds, I guess, is it just is too. It slow. doesn't update quickly enough. So. It's it's like sort of the Goldilocks problem of frames. Well, you can right. always adjust the number of frames. So if I went twenty five frames, oh, well, that might be a bit too, too slow. Too slow. Uh, two <laughs> frames. What does that do? Okay, that's a lot calmer. So it's smoother. Yeah. So that you can play around with the variables in here. You can you can mix and match things and see what happens and try yep. and explore. Um, we did say we were going to look at changing that Anglia for a to an hour. You want to, okay. I really right. want this to okay. happen now. Okay, so if we change it right at the top, object yeah. create an owl. So when the app starts, it's going to create an owl. And it changes everything else. It's magic. Uh, except for the object angles. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to go through quickly and just change these. Now because we've changed the object that's been created at the yeah. top, in these object angle blocks, it removes the Ford Anglia, so you, you've then got the owl to use. So the uh, the owl, <laughs> he's not got his wings out. No. So he's. Um, I feel like maybe we're using Wingardium Leviosa. It has that feel, doesn't it? Mm. We have control of the owl with a spell. Yeah. He's not totally in control of his own body. <laughs> okay. So we. I think we're gonna have a look at one more challenge. Yeah, I Should think we do we, that. I think we've, we've got, got time. We've got some time. More. So let's go back to the challenges. So we've got two now that have, have been completed. Yeah. Uh, what should we have a play with? Do you want to make fireworks or do you want to make music? What do you think is going to be the most fun to watch at home and make the most sense? Is is a good. I think the fireworks. The is fireworks. Because nice okay. that last one was relatively complicated. Yeah. I think it's uh, nice to go to another beginner challenge. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice to <clears> sort of <throat> see that there's lots of things. If you even if you've never ever coded before at all. And you're a little bit intimidated that this is really straightforward. You're going to follow step by step. Yeah. We're going to look after you, right? Yeah. Okay. So make fireworks that fizz and then bang. That sounds pretty good. We are it indoors. Does. We appear to be in the Great Hall. Yeah. Um, this is a very Weasley Brothers. It is a very Weasley Brothers kind of thing, isn't yeah. it? Uh, so again, when the app starts, we don't recommend this. We do not recommend in real this. Life. Um, <laughs> if you want to see uh, what the Weasley brothers get up to in real life, or the Phelps twins as they they are known, yeah. we actually made some some films with them uh, yeah, a while ago. And you can check those out on the the Cano YouTube channel. Um, so there's there's four films of them exploring the Harry Potter Cano coding kit. Yeah. So if you want your fix of Weasley twins, we've got you covered, right? We totally we do. have, yeah. So um, the app starts every one second. We're going to change that to frames. So yep. we're speeding that up Just a little like bit. Before. Uh, we are going to make some particles, which are a pretty cool thing. I they think. are my favourite addition to the Cano uh, arsenal. Wow, okay, so yeah. there's a lot of particles happening there, there on their own. Yeah. So we've just got, when the app starts, every frame, create particle at 400 by 300, which yeah. is kind of in the middle of the screen, yeah. and it just keeps going. It will, because it's happening every single frame. So if you were to, say, take that out of there, I wouldn't, but... <laughs> what happens if I do that? Well, you could. It just if, you, stops. if you put it at when up starts, then it will make one single particle. <laughs> I see. It runs once, and then okay. it will be like, okay, I've done it. So by putting it in this loop, 
Yeah. Are you saying every frame, yeah. create one popsicle? Just keep making them. Okay. So we're going to go add some more mouse controls. Again, in the Harry Potter yeah. Cano Coding Kit, this would be a wand. Mm -hmm. And we are going to create particles at the coordinates of the mouse. Yeah. So now if you mouse over it, you can wow. see okay. them follow. They're not very fireworky though, yeah. They're not very yet. I think we're going to get there though. I, yeah, we'll I have a feeling it. that these are going to become more fireworky. Yeah. There are a lot of blocks in there. Lots there of options. There are a lot of blocks. Uh, so we've now got particle force direction, 45 degrees, yep. and a strength of 10. Mm -hmm. So what happens if I... Ooh, well that's quite exciting That's well. really cool. Yeah. It's still not fireworks though, it's is not it? Fireworks. not fireworks. So let's add some maths in so here. we're going to make it random. So the particle force direction... So then draw. it will randomly go... 360 degrees of randomness. And we're going to calm it down a bit as well. So it was exactly like it was before, but this is a, makes more sense, I guess. Yeah, it's sort of, it's a bit more gentle. It's very gentle. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we are going to change the colour of the particles. They've gone very gothic there with the <laughs> They have. That's, um, it's, not, it's not massively uh, sort Still of not ma festive fireworky. No. No. It's like the opposite of a fireworks. It is. So, as suggested, you change it to blue. We're suggesting blue. But there's a whole palette here. Which colour would you like to go for? <gasps> You're saying we go against the rules. I'm saying we go against the rules. Let's go for pink. Okay. It's my favourite colour. This sort of pink here? That sort of fuchsia? Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay. And the end colour. We've got to make it lighter. So we need to go lighter. So yeah. we could go for another a pink nice or a pink. yellow or... Oh, yellow. That a would yellow? be very colourful. Okay. Yeah. So if we go for yellow... Whoa, wow. okay. that's a nice colour combo. So now when you move this around halfway through the halfway through finishing the code, we've got particles that start at the point of the mouse controller as pink and as they push out and dissolve they become yellow. Yeah. Okay. I think it feels like we're gonna add more particles. Um, so right now they're a bit big. Yeah, they are quite big. They look quite fizzily enough like fireworks. Yeah. So having them Oh yeah, that's, that's so now we've getting got closer particles that start at size 10 mm -hmm. and then as they get further from the mouse pointer they shrink and then disappear yeah right so let's add some more particles in here yeah i was thinking do we have the lifespan block we we do so this will uh determine how long they last so at the moment it's in milliseconds okay. so it will last for a whole second from the time when the particle is created to when it disappears okay and that so we're changing like it this. to 500 so it's a little yeah. bit more like and then it just it's gone so then it's much shorter now. They're not. Yeah. The, the way it sort of displays on the screen, I guess, is they're not going quite as far because they yeah. haven't got as much time. Exactly. Okay. And we are going to add some more controls in here. So this is another loop. It is another loop. And because more this particles. is our bang. Half. Okay. So we've done the fizz. So the first we've bit done was the, the fizz. fizz. And we need some more mouse. So it's very similar to uh, the regular uh, particle block, but this one's specifically for making things go bang. So it's saying change the black to the blue to match the physical particles, but since we've already gone we've rogue... We've already gone rogue. I, I think... You I think, should pick a colour this time, um, I think. Actually, I think a blue with a pink and yellow might be quite good. Yeah. Maybe a sort of more aquamarine-y. Mm. There's so many choices here, it's a little bit overwhelming, it's, but... It's great. Okay. Uh, so now... <laughs> well, that's nice, yeah. Effective. There is a fizz, which is the pink to yellow. That's the little, the little particles, and then over the top of that is the larger bang of the blue particles. Yeah. And we are going to add in a speaker, so this makes because sense. fireworks aren't aren't quiet. No, not at all. Even ones that happen to be indoors. And <laughs> in fact, I think that would probably make them more loud. Yeah, they'd probably be really loud. Yeah. Like. And so we're speaker play, and that's the one noise. The noise. Well, it's not, not for us. Uh, we don't want a bell either. <laughs> That's not quite right. Uh, fireworks whoosh. Firework whoosh. Okay. That's pretty cool. That's nice. Again, for any educators out there or parents, this is one for headphones. Uh, maybe equip your young coders with headphones <laughs> yeah. first uh, before letting them loose. 
Uh, I'm actually going to take this speaker block out, otherwise, <laughs> otherwise you're not going to be able to hear us talk. No, that might so, be a bit much. Um, if there's a block that you put in by, by mistake, or if you're experimenting and you've got a block that you no longer want, you can just drag that down into the, um, the trash can down here at the bottom. The lid yeah. pops off, you let go, and it's gone. Magic. So this still works without the speaker, it's just a bit quieter. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's offering us a remix. Can you make the particles bigger and more colourful? Well, we've already made them quite colourful. They are pretty colourful. How about making them bigger? Yeah, I think so. Yeah? Yeah. Let's, so, like, overwhelm Hogwarts. Do we want to particles. change the ones that are fizzing or the ones that are banging? What do you think? Let's have a big bang. A big bang. Okay. So in here we had a code block, which is particle start size 10, end size 5. So that is colour coded to particles. So let's I think we can change the size of the bang. Should we try? <laughs> we can try. Let's see what happens. <laughs> we're, we're, we're going a little bit rogue here, so yeah. no guarantees. Oh, um, actually, I can think of something even more fun. Go on then. If you change the particle type. Okay. So which so block do I need? Particle type block, just there. Uh, oh yeah. If you drag that to the top. Do you want it right at the top of this one? Yeah. Okay. And then if you select on the drop down, you can change all sorts of different things. Whoa. I love a good spark. A spark, yeah. okay. So is this changing for both? So they're both? like sparkles. Look at that. How cute. Wow, okay. So, so you because might want it's, to make them a bit bigger so we can see. So because it's at the very top there, it it's changes it for sure. both statements. So both the fizz yeah. and the bang. That's so cute. Wow, okay. So those are pretty big. So we've got the... The fizzing away, and then the blue is in the background is the bang. Yeah. So there's lots of lots of that going on. Yeah. So today we've been through one last thing. One last thing. Okay. We haven't looked at the my favourite part okay. from before, which was look at that. Very important. You can look at all the JavaScript that you've just written. So all the JavaScript is there. We weren't making it up. No, it's true. Absolutely true. So you're using a visual language, which is Cano Code, which. It, it's very similar to Scratch, which you, you, lots of you may have used before. Um, it, in this case, it's, it's customised and built around Harry Potter for the Harry Potter kind of coding kit. Um, but there is JavaScript behind it, and you can see the code. Uh, so, yeah, cool stuff. So yeah, we've, right. we've been through the Educator's Guide. We've talked about the uh, four concepts of coding that are, are in these five challenges. We've done three of the five challenges. We've shown you that you can use a mouse rather than the wand of the Harry Potter Cano coding kit for these five challenges. This is a great free resource that you can use any time of the year. Uh, Hour of Code is, uh, is done this week, but lots of people use it all year round in their code clubs. If you enjoy these five challenges and you want to progress, you want to do the, the up to 70 challenges that are in the Harry Potter Cano coding kit, this thing over here, uh, it is on a great deal at the moment up until the end of the year, until the 31st of December, you can save 20 US dollars, 20 Canadian dollars, 20 British pounds, or uh, 20 euros on the price of this kit. Just head to cano.me um, and you can order a kit for, for yourself. Um, if you're an educator, we also have an education team that you can get in touch with. Uh, their email address is education at cano.me. So if you're an educator, you're in a school or a library and you need more kits, those are the people to talk to. Thank you so much for spending some time with us today. Yeah. We've had quite a lot of fun. I've had way too much fun. Yeah. Um, we might carry on this for a little bit. I'm getting a look that says maybe we won't. But um, <laughs> given, no, definitely no. Uh, given half a chance, we would sit and play with this all day. Yeah. Um, there's so much fun stuff with Hour of Code. Don't forget you can also revisit any of the previous uh, Cano Hour of Code um, challenges. Uh, there's some from 2017, 2016, all the way back to 2015 with Mate Pong. Um, we will make sure those are out on social media as well. So if you are looking for other stuff to do with Cano, lots and lots of choices. Thank you so much. We'll be back soon. Yeah, bye. bye.